Okay, people, I get asked this question a lot. What's the difference between opacity and fill in Photoshop? So I'm gonna teach you that right now and I'm gonna show you which one you should use and why. So let's go into Photoshop and have a look. So here we have a picture that I took down in Cornwall in England and a bit of text, the School of Photography. So firstly, let's just talk about opacity. That one's really easily. It it does what it says on the tin, all right? It changes the opacity of a layer. So here's my layer, the text layer here. And if I just click on the arrow here for opacity, I can drag the opacity down of that layer. And as you can see, it's becoming more transparent, all right? So that is roughly 50% opacity, and that is roughly 25%, etc. okay? Let's just drag that back up to 100% here. And now let's do the same with the fill. So the fill is just underneath here. And again, you can click on that arrow and you can drag your fill backwards and forwards. So there we go, roughly about 50% on the fill. It does exactly the same thing. Let's go down to roughly 25% again. And it's not doing any different in this scenario to what the opacity did, okay? So let's just drag that fill back up to 100%. So we're back to normal. So fill does the same thing as opacity to any layer as long as there is no attributes added to that layer. And what I mean by that is there's no layer styles or blend modes added, okay? And that is the difference. So if there's nothing that you're doing to a layer, then fill and opacity will do exactly the same thing. So now let's go into Photoshop again and let's add some attributes, some layer styles to this text. Do the same thing again. And to add a layer style, it's very simple. I will just double click on the blank area of this layer or you can right click and you can go blend in options up the top there, all right? But an easy way is to just double click on the layer and the layer style box appears, all right? So let's just add some stuff to it, shall we? Let's add a drop shadow there, and I'm gonna click on the drop shadow box here, and let's go and change some stuff. So let's change the uh, distance of it a little bit like that, and maybe the spread just very slightly, and yeah, how about the size? Okay, that'll do. So that's one layer style that we've added, drop shadow. Um, let's add a stroke as well, all right? Click on stroke here, and make sure you highlight on the box as well. And let's choose, yeah, a blue stroke will do actually. Um, yeah, that'll do fine, okay, that's absolutely fine. Let's just leave it there, because it's nice and bright. Um, so let's click OK. And then down in the Layers panel here, you can see that I've added an effect here, a layer style, a drop shadow, and a stroke. So now let's do the same thing again. Let's change the opacity of the layer, and let's change the feel of the layer, okay? So I'm gonna come over to opacity here, and another way that you can actually change the opacity other than clicking that drop down arrow is you can hover over the word opacity, left click on your mouse, and you can drag down and up, all right? So let's take the opacity down of this layer, and as you can see, it is making the whole layer, including the layer style that we've just added, transparent, it's changing the opacity of everything, every pixel within that layer. Let's take that back up to 100%. And now let's try it the same thing with the fill. So I'm gonna click on the fill and I'm gonna drag down the fill to about 50%. Now, as you can see, it's changing the opacity of the actual text, the main text, but not the effects that I've added to that text. It's changing the opacity of the fill of that layer the text and that's why it's called fill. So that's the difference, the main difference between opacity and fill. Opacity will make the whole layer, including any effects that you've added, transparent or, or opaque. Whereas the fill will change the opacity of just what's filling that layer and not the effects that's attached to that layer. I hope you've got that so far, all right? So let's just take the fill back up to 100%. So I've got the opacity and fill back up to 100%, right? Now a very easy way to use opacity and fill in text is to add a kind of watermark. It's very easy to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on the effects here to bring up the layer style box again. And this time I'm gonna tick off of stroke 
I'm going to tick off Drop Shadow and I'm going to come up to Bevel and Emboss and I'm going to click on that. I'm going to tick on Contour. Let's choose Contour here and I'm just going to leave it like that as a matter of fact. And now let's click OK. And now I'm going to come down to my Layers Palette and I'm going to lower the fill right down to zero. And now what you can see is that it has reduced the opacity of just what's filling that layer, not the layer style that's been added to that layer. And it gives you that lovely kind of watermark effect there. So that's a really easy and common way you use opacity and fill using text. But when it comes to photography, there is a much better way to use opacity and fill on your layers. And that's when you're adding things like textures or color fill layers, and you wanna be adjusting the actual photograph. That's what we're gonna look at in a minute. But before I show you that, I wanna take this opportunity to tell you about the courses that we run over at theschooloffphotography.com. If you wanna learn photography properly, if you wanna learn Photoshop properly by professional teachers in structured five-star rated courses, come over and see us at theschooloffphotography.com. We teach tens of thousands of people all over the world, photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, studio lighting, etc. And I know that we can teach you properly like we have done to them as well. So go and check out our five star reviews on Google, Trustpilot, Facebook. And if you want to learn photography properly, you want to learn Photoshop properly, Lightroom, all that stuff, make sure you come and see us at theschooloffphotography.com. Right, let's go and have a look how we use opacity and fill on photographs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually hide this layer here so we can see our picture. So like I said um, before, this is a photograph that I took down in Cornwall in England and it's shooting into the sun and you get burnt out areas when you shoot into the sun. It's as simple as that. And as you can see, it's very bright and white. There's a bit of orange there, but you know, essentially it is just a bit bright. Now, what you can do with blend modes is you can add a warm color and then you can stick that warm color just to the highlights, okay? And therefore, you're gonna warm up this burnt out area in your image. So let's do that. First thing I'm gonna do is add a new layer and then I'm gonna press Shift and F5 to bring up the fill box. From the contents here, I'm gonna select color, and then I'm gonna choose a color on my image, I think probably somewhere about here. I want a nice orange so that I can overlay it. Maybe over here, let's have a look at that. Okay, that'll do, and then let's come across here to make it really intense, and then just click OK, and OK again. And there you go, I have now just filled the screen with an orange color, that I have taken from the sunset. Now, I just want this orange color mainly to attach itself to the light areas underneath, and that's where you use blend modes, okay? So, over here, I'm going to click on the blend mode drop-down box, and for that, you probably want either darken or multiply here. So I'm gonna actually choose multiply. And I'm just gonna name this layer blend mode for reasons that you'll find out in a minute, okay? So I'm just gonna double click on the word layer one here and I'm gonna type in blend mode and press enter. Then I'm gonna duplicate this layer by pressing control or command and J. And then on this layer, I'm gonna take the blend mode off. So I'm just gonna put it onto normal on this layer. Then I'm gonna double click on this layer and name this one no blend mode and press enter. And this is so that we can compare the two, all right? And now let's just hide the blend mode layer underneath like that. And now I'm just gonna change the opacity of this layer down to around about 20%. And as you can see, it's doing that. So for argument's sake, I've just made the, uh, the layer 80% transparent. Let's take that back up to 100% there. And then let's do the same with the fill. And there you go, it's exactly the same. And that's because no blend mode has been attached to this particular image. All right, it's as simple as that. So fill and opacity, they're exactly the same thing when there are no attributes like a blend mode or layer style 
added to your layer. So I'm just gonna whack that back up to 100 and I'm gonna hide that layer. So now let's do the same thing with the layer that's got a blend mode attached to it. So I'm gonna select that layer and reveal it. And let's take down the opacity down to 20 odd percent like that. And that's doing an all right job, but effectively you've got that color going at 20% opacity across your whole image. So let's go back up to 100 on the opacity. And now let's take the fill down to around about 20%. And there you go. And now most of that color is still sticking to the highlights, i.e. the sunset. And that's because that's the effect of the blend mode. And the fill is just reducing the opacity of the fill of that layer, not the effects that are attached to that layer. I know it sounds complicated, but I'm hoping that you're getting it, all right? So I'm gonna go back to the no blend mode layer and look at the difference, all right? Right, so now let's just hide that blend mode layer. Let's reveal the non-blend mode layer and select it so we can work on it. And let's take the fill of this one down to 20%, all right? And now we can actually compare the two. So the no blend mode layer is on a fill of 20% and the blend mode layer is also on a fill of 20%. So I'm gonna now hide that one and reveal this one. Okay, let's hide that one and reveal that one. So you can see clearly now the difference between the two. This one here that hasn't got a blend mode attached has got an equal merit of opacity, as you can see. The whole layer has got 20% opacity for argument's sake. I know we changed the fill, but when there's no blend modes attached, the fill and opacity are exactly the same. So this has got 20% opacity. Whereas if I hide that and bring this one back, this has got 20% opacity on just the fill of the layer, okay? Which means it leaves behind the effect of that layer the blend mode effect of that layer, which is exactly what we want in this particular case. You can see it's just warmed up the picture. It's taken out that burnt out sun and it's actually color toned the picture quite nice really. So just to recap, with a blend mode or layer style attached to a layer, the fill will only change the opacity of what's filling that layer not the effects of that layer. And that's just one example of how you can use it, one typical example, burnt out areas in your picture. It works really well with textures and we've got a load of textures over on at the School of Photography in our Fine Art Photography course. So come over and check that out if you're interested in using textures on landscape photography. And please tell us what you think of this video. We'd love to hear from you in the comments of this video. Tell us what you think. Tell us your experience in using Opacity and Fill together. And please tell us if we've made a difference to your using of Photoshop. You also need to help us out now as well, please. If we've helped you, please help us. Just hit that like button. It don't take you a second. Hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell as well so that you can be notified of future videos. And thanks for watching. And remember, if you wanna learn photography and Photoshop and all other photography related things properly, come over and see us at theschoolofphotography.com. Mm -hmm.